Hello and welcome to the second of our mini EV project videos. In this episode, I'm going to be discussing how the car takes the electrochemical energy stored here in the battery and converts it into a controllable form which the motors here need to operate. This time we'll be working out how the full drive system from the battery through to the motor works, including how it can support regeneration of energy back into the battery when the car is slowing down. Also, if you're interested in the fundamentals of how batteries actually work, we've put a cool introductory video together, and you can see this in the link below. So, what forms the powertrain of our car? Well, here's the photo. At the bottom, we can see there's a battery, battery number one. Similarly, at the top, there's battery number two, slightly hidden underneath the motor. And there's motor number one, and there's motor number two. Now between the batteries and the motors we see this blue box and that's our motor drive shown by the arrow here. The question is, how are they all connected and how does this work? So it's time to get into the lab. Using our multimeter on the input side we measure that the two batteries are connected in series. Now this is great to know. On the output side, using the same multimeter on a different setting, we find that the two motors are actually connected in parallel. And this is all very useful information as it allows us to start to draw out the circuit diagram of our drive. So on the input side, we have our two series batteries giving us maybe 15 to 16 volts DC into the drive. On the output side, we have the two motors connected and they're connected in parallel. The bit we don't know though is how the drive works, what's actually inside that blue box. Well, let's try and work it out. We are experienced in all sorts of power electronic systems and we think we know what is inside the blue drive box. We think it's a high frequency switching circuit commonly known as an H bridge. An H bridge allows us to take a fixed positive battery voltage and create a variable average voltage to supply the motors. This allows us to control the speed. The H-bridge also allows us to create both a positive and negative voltage for the motors, which allows us to run the car in forward and reverse directions. Lastly, when the drive is running, an audible tone can be heard, which would indicate switch mode operation, which is typical of many H-bridge implementations. Let's use the oscilloscope now to confirm if this is a high frequency H-bridge circuit. So here we put a voltage probe across the output of the H bridge, one on each side, and the current probe monitors the current from the battery. And we'll monitor this on the scope as we speed the car up in forward and reverse directions. So here channel one is switching, and that's the yellow trace here, running about 1.7 kilohertz. As we change the direction of the motor drive, you can see that channel one now remains flat and channel two is operating. And as the motor speeds up and slows down, you see a changing waveform. In both cases, channel three is our battery current. Now we've got quite a cool feature on this particular scope. We can subtract channel one from channel two, and that gives us the net resultant voltage being presented across the motor terminals. And let's take a look at what that looks like as we speed up and slow down. So here in one direction, we have a negative net voltage on the top plot. And then as we go in the opposite direction, we have a positive net voltage. So this shows you how the drive can turn the positive battery voltage into a positive or negative variable voltage to be applied to the motor. Now one thing I mentioned earlier in this series is the ability of regen to take energy from the motors and put it back into the battery. So we're triggering now on a negative battery current, so on the blue trace here we'll have a triggered waveform if we sense a current below zero, i.e. regen. We speed the motor up in one direction and there we've captured it. So I hope you found that interesting. We've covered some details of how the motor drive in the car works and gets the energy from the batteries to the motors and then some level of regen. And in future videos, we'll take a look at the motors here in a little bit more depth and some of the custom electronics that we've developed to monitor the whole of this system whilst it's racing around. See you next time.